Good evening. Thank you, Judy. <laughs> Just uh, let Gordon know if you still need a pencil. You might want to check your pencil first. We just realized several of them aren't even sharpened. So, If you're looking at your sheet, there's a lot more fill in the blank on the back there is on the front. But This is uh, day 36 of our 40 days of prayer. We're almost at the finish line. Isn't that amazing? 36. We are praying today for God's strength and wisdom to invite people uh, to come to our celebration day. And um, we, just, we just want to really get our minds thinking about other people, uh, particularly those who don't know the Lord. And maybe the person that you wrote down that you've been praying for for 30 days, maybe they're ready, but maybe they're not. You let God answer that. Uh, but we hope that some of them are ready, and you can invite some, and that's why we ask for wisdom, and we pray for God to give us the opportunities. Um, <laughs> I, I, I didn't ask permission, but somebody just shared a, a story earlier about uh, praying for opportunity, and then coming across somebody, and it's just like, whoa, there's the opportunity right there. God hears our prayers. Did you know that? I just want to make sure you knew that, and he answers those, and... Uh, Keep praying. Keep praying. Uh, this Sunday is Celebration Sunday. Uh, again, it kind of completes our 40 days, and we just, we just want to celebrate. Uh, we would like to know if you're going to come and eat with us. The sign-up sheet is on, uh, on the table there. That would uh, be really helpful. And we also need some help bringing rolls and desserts. And um, <laughs> I started a joke, and then I stopped myself, but I'll just go ahead and say it and then stop it. But... Any desserts that's left over, feel free to send home with the preacher. And then I just realized, it was like, oh, my goodness, the number of desserts, that would not be good. <laughs> Let's see how much weight I can gain in one week. But um, we need help with that. Operation Christmas Child shoe boxes are available for pickup in the children's wings. And uh, they're due back in, in uh, like, November. But uh, pick a box up and uh, start filling it up. There's a bridal shower by mail for Mary Grace Garrett. Uh, give all the gift cards to LeVere Brown or Denise Dukes by October the 17th. Uh, LeVere also asked that you put in some extra gift cards for her. Um, <laughs> just kidding. I thought that one will get me in trouble. Uh, we extend sympathy to Connie Norrell in the death of her father. Uh, Brad Solomon has been diagnosed with autoimmune liver disease. Uh, we need to be praying for Brad. Uh, Denise Nelson had surgery, knee surgery on Monday. She's home uh, recovering. Norma Williams' son Bill had successful surgery to remove the tumor by his eye and will be evaluated by doctors at Duke in a month. Um, Army Fonville's father will have surgery to remove his cancer on October uh, the 14th. So we need to be aware of those. Uh, newsletter goes out tomorrow. Please keep in mind all the other updates that will be on that uh, as well. Let's pray, and then we'll begin our lesson for tonight. God, here we are. We are here in your name, loving being with your people. And yet, Father, also thinking about others who, who are not here. Father, we pray for opportunities. And we pray that you would give us the wisdom and the strength to take advantage of those opportunities. And we pray for opportunities to invite others to Celebration Day. But Father, we will follow your lead, but we ask for those opportunities. Father, you've heard the list that we've read and those that are sick and are challenged. And Father, we just pray that you would intercede and help. You are our God and we need you. So we lift you up. We praise your name. We thank you for being in our lives. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, tonight we're going to talk about the prayer of adoration. We, uh, we've been emphasizing, really, everything so far has been about almost kind of the inward kind of focus. 
We've talked a lot about just simple prayer. Uh, we've talked about uh, transformation within us, about God's will, not our will. And uh, tonight, I just thought it was a good time. Let's just kind of lift up and look upward and talk about prayer and God. There are two sides of adoration. Here's the way I define them. Praise talks about who God is. Thanks talks about what He has done. Does that make sense to you? Now those two are, are often weaved together. Uh, but it's easy for us to give thanks for what He has done. Because we can look and we see how much God has done in our lives and, and in the lives of others and answered prayer. So we give thanks and at least on my journey, it was, it, was, it was just kind of a realization that I really wasn't praising God for who He is. And so we're going to talk about those two things tonight, prayer and thanks. Here's just one example of those being weaved together, Psalm 35, 18. I will give you thanks in the great assembly among throngs of people. I will praise you. I'm just going to give a quick confession here. Uh, for a long time... The Psalms were one of the last books that I would want to read. There just wasn't enough of the practical and the, uh, I don't know if law is the right word, or Psalms is a lot about feelings. Have you noticed that? It's just a lot about feelings, and that's just not where I was. I just, the intellectual approach, and let's, let's just kind of get this. And it's just like, it was such a light bulb moment for me in learning what praise is learning about praising God for simply who He is, and just lifting Him up as God. My focus was on, but what do we do? But what do we do? Let's get to the practical. And then I realized, if you look at a lot of the books that Paul wrote, the first half is, you might call, theological, and then the second half is practical. Colossians, first two chapters last two chapters. Ephesians, the first three chapters, last three chapters. And I was, I was really missing it. I was just really missing about who God is about all those things. So I, I just want to dive a little bit more into it, and I'm going to start with, in a sense, the easier half, and talk about thanks. Did you know that David chose priests to minister before the ark whose basic job was to give thanks. He appointed some of the Levites to minister before the ark of the Lord to make petition to give thanks and to praise the Lord, the God of Israel. <laughs> hey, Jonas, how you doing? What kind of job you've got these days? I'm a thanker. I'm a thanker. That's my job. I stand there in, in the, uh, the tabernacle and around the tabernacle, and I just, I, just give, I just give thanks. Would you like that job? <laughs> I just, I'm a thanker. Uh, Leviticus 7.12, just one example. The Old Testament have thanks offerings. Isn't that interesting? Okay, I find that interesting. Anybody else find that interesting? It's thanks offerings. I mean, here, here comes the offering, and I understand that for sin, right? I think it's also interesting they had guilt offerings. What's this one for? Just want to say thanks. Just want to say thanks. You, you remember the story when, when there was ten lepers that came to Jesus, and Jesus sent them to the priest, and on their way they were healed? How many of the ten were thankful all right, that was a trick question. <laughs> let, me, let me ask it a different way, because you all said the wrong answer. How many of them expressed their thanks? How many of them were thankful? I believe all ten. I believe all ten was thankful that they had been healed. I believe all ten was pretty excited that the leprosy went away. But you see only one expressed their thanks. And Jesus says, where 
are the other guys. That's interesting. And then, uh, again, the Psalms are just filled with, um, uh, with praise. Um, here's, here's what I want to do. Uh, I, I, just, I don't want to just talk about it. I have, I have six scriptures. I need six people to read those psalms, read those verses loudly and with some enthusiasm. Now, if you can just stand up when it's your turn and you can say it loud, go for it. But we also have microphones because we want to hear you. Now, I realize with that kind of introduction that some of you are like, mm, I don't think I'm going to volunteer for that one then. <laughs> All right, we got one. Uh, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you, you can look it up, or I'm also going to have it on the screen, okay? Lewis, you've got Psalm 106 and verse 1. Psalm 106 and verse 1. All right, need another volunteer. All right, Dale, you've got uh, Psalm 9 and verse 1. Psalm 9 and 1. What's that? I saw another hand somewhere. Thank you. Um, Psalm 30 and verse 12. It'll be on the screen. Um, let's see, Trey, where am I at? Luke 10, 21. All right, I need two more. Summer? Um, Romans 1 and 8. <laughs> wow, am I slow. They're on their sheet also. All right, I need one more. God will smile on you if you volunteer. Thank you. Um, yeah, that'll be Ephesians 5 and 20. For the rest of you who, who, who are not reading, let's just take a moment. We're just going to listen. We're going to listen to God's Word and listen to these aspects of praise. All right? Lewis, the microphone's right there next to you. Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. I will thank you, O Lord, with all of my heart. I will tell of your wonders. Man, isn't that, isn't that cool? It's not just I'm giving thanks, but i got to share that with somebody. You know, just thanking God, I've got to share that with somebody. Psalm 30, 12. Shall I stand or sit? Okay. That my heart I, I, I may sing to you and not be silent. O oh Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. Love it. Did you not see the heart in that? Well done. All right, clear back in the corner. <laughs> Jesus, is full of joy through the Holy Spirit, said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. Okay. I just got to talk about that for just a moment. Look at that. Jesus was what? Full of joy. Through the... Don't you wish you had the Holy Spirit? Oh, you do? Full of joy through the Spirit. What did he do because he was full of joy? He gave thanks. All right, Summer? First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you. First, I'm going to start with you. Look around. Just look around. Who are you thankful for? You don't have to say it, just think it. Just be thankful for the people around you. All right, Wiley? 
always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Absolutely. Always in everything. The Bible's full of giving thanks. Giving thanks. So, what are you thankful for? That was a question I'm looking for an actual response. <laughs> Share it with the rest of us. What, what are you thankful for? How has God been good to you in your life or the life of someone else? For him? <laughs> what else? What are you thankful for? For forgiveness? Some of us have a lot more thanks about that than others, too, right? For my friend, my family. Ah, I love it. God bless you with some family and friends. Giving thanks to God for that. What else? I'm grateful for my children that I can be with. For your children. children? Because they believe me and they keep their children in good. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Been blessed by them. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Feels so with. Awesome. Thankful for finding this church family she feels comfortable with, including David. <laughs> Don't you love that? Don't you love that? Some of, some of y'all have been here since the 1800s. I don't know. <laughs> don't, don't forget that. Don't forget how special the people around you are. Mike? I'm thankful for this woman behind me. Awesome. Awesome. I need a ride home. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, you, you got so many points with your first comment, and then you took them away. <laughs> you are blessed. You are blessed. I, do, we need, do we need more practice? And giving thanks. The first thing that comes to our mind when we're going to go pray is we have things to ask for, right? Hurts and pains and troubles and trials and challenges, and that's our first instinct. It's important that we take time to be thankful. Again, I, I go back to the ten lepers, and Jesus said, where's the other guys? Not, that's a little paraphrase, but were there not ten? Where are the nine? Where's the other guys at? Where's, where's the thanks for what I've done for you? All right, let's, um, let's do praise now. And I, I just thought this, this quote uh, by Ollie was, was interesting. When I give thanks, my thoughts still circle about myself to some extent. Does that make sense to you? See, we give thanks. We give we, oh, thanks for family. See, that's because my family has blessed me. I'm thankful for this church because this church has blessed me. I'm thankful for my wife. I, you know, that's, and again, that's okay. But thanks still centers somewhat around ourselves. Praise, let's focus on God. And who he is. Now, I have I have nine scriptures for praise. Do I have nine volunteers willing to praise God through the reading of his word? All right, we got um, man, I got my notes everywhere. Psalm 146, verses one and two. All right. Matt, Psalm 34 and 1. Who else? Oh, we're not quite ready. What? 
Psalm 40 and verse 3. All right, who will take Hebrews 13, 15? David? All right, Revelation 5. I broke it up to verse 11 and 12, but since I'm having to pull out volunteers, who would read both verses for us? Thank you. And what else do I have? Psalm 103 and verse 1. All right. Make sure you do it with heart again. Psalm 100 and verse 4. Becky, and then Brian, I'll give you Luke 24, 53. All right? All right. Here we go again. For the rest of you, listen. Listen as we read these. A lot of them are psalms of praise. What? Jeff, you went? Oh, okay. Gotcha. All right. I need to click, right? Praise the Lord. Mm. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Amen. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. Always. Always be on my lips. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. <laughs> you, you just have those moments where you just sing, just lifting up God and just singing to God. I usually do when I'm alone because nobody else wants to hear that. But it's like, man, just lift him up. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise the fruit of lips that confess his name. And that an intriguing verse. We, we don't offer sacrifices anymore, do we? You think about all the sacrifices that they offered in the Old Testament. We're offering sacrifices, but they come from our lips right here. Now, praise in heaven is serious business. This is a beautiful passage. Go ahead. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels numbering thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they sang, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Yeah. 10,000s upon 10,000s. Can you even picture that? And in a loud voice, and they're praising God and the Lamb. Psalm 103, and verse 1. <clears throat> Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my innocent being. Praise His holy name. Amen. Thank you. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Praise, 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 praise. Now, this last is the very last verse in the book of Luke. Very last verse. This is the ending. This is the culmination. Jesus has just ascended. The apostles haven't experienced that. So here's what they do after that. Brian? And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. Love that. Mm -hmm. I think we often overlook that passage. The apostles, once Jesus ascended, what do they do? What, what, what do we do? We go to, in a sense, the place of God, and we're going to praise Him. So... How would you praise God? What would you praise Him for? Now, here's, here's how we're going to do this. I want you to give me an attribute of God. And as we talk about that attribute, that's basically lifting up praise to Him. He is holy. Who else is holy? Well, praise God for His holiness. Give me some other attributes of God. Hopefully you can catch on to where I'm going with this. 
is faithfulness. faithfulness. He is faithful, yes. He's all powerful. He's all powerful. We said mercy. Mercy? Just? Patient? Loving. Loving. Come on. Creative. Creative. Everlasting. 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 Unchanging. Unchanging. All knowing. All knowing. Faithful. Forgiving. Ever loving. Okay. Good. Good. Don't you love this? Or is it just me? You start thinking about God and all these things. It's like, and I'm sure you don't know this, but it's like, wow. God is amazing. You didn't know that, did you? You see, you knew that, but we don't spend a lot of time dwelling on that. This will change your life. This will change your attitude. This will change your worry. This will change your anxiety. This will change who you are. Because what you're doing is you're now focusing on God more than you. Who's in control? You are. (laughs) That's just what we think. God is. And the more you focus on him, the more you understand that. So I, I want to, I, I just, I wanted to just take that time just to praise and thanks and dwell upon that. Now let's look at uh, just a few other things. Oh, I was really behind, wasn't I? Um, I just, I love this, this quote um, by Richard Foster and just wanted to share it with you. Our God is not made of stone. His heart is the most sensitive and tender of all. I don't think a lot of people realize that. No act goes unnoticed, no matter how insignificant or small. A cup of cold water is enough to put tears in the eyes of God. Like the proud mother who is thrilled to receive a wilted bouquet of dandelions from her child, So God celebrates our feeble expressions of gratitude. I love that. Anybody got one of those bouquets? One of those one of those drawings? One of those uh, Christmas presents made out of paper, star foam, something? I love that parallel. See, that's God. I heard one guy say, (laughs) he's got your picture on his refrigerator. God's the ultimate parent. And, And however feeble you think it is, that's not how he views it. He just wants to to hear your expressions of thanks and praise. And I and I came across this from from C. S. Lewis. Uh, and he gave four obstacles to, uh, to our adoration. Hmm. What do you think one of them is? You don't have to guess C.S. Lewis's, but what's, a, what's an obstacle that keeps us from thanking and praising God? Life. Life. Pride. Pride. He said pride. Pride, he pride. said. Pride, thank you. <laughs> self-centeredness. self-centeredness self-centeredness 
Yeah. Jeff, did you have a, well, I'll make Wiley talk then. Or not Wiley, Roxy. <laughs> Anybody else, an obstacle? Busyness, I would say busyness. Busyness, yeah. All right. You're definitely getting some of the things that C.S. Lewis is going to say. Obstacles to adoration. You ever heard of C.S. Lewis? Okay. Inattention. We cannot adore when we do not see it. Busyness. Missed God. You ever had one of those experiences where God just makes a beautiful sunrise or sunset and you never noticed it so somebody pointed it out to you it's like wow god did something amazing so we do that every day you know there are burning bushes everywhere and we just we just miss them because we're too busy looking at at other things c.s lewis said also the wrong kind of attention seeing the things of life but not seeing god in the life of things You looked at your day today, what filled your day, and how important was it? <laughs> Not nearly as important when you ask it that way in a question. But during that moment, extremely important, necessary. This has to be done. And there are things like that in life, but when it takes us away from seeing God. Third thing Lewis, uh, C.S. Lewis said was greed. Demanding more pleasure instead of enjoying pleasure. The thirst for more. The all-American dream. More, more, more. Something else, something else. I have this, I need something new. Keeps us from thanking God. It, it causes us to request more from God. And then he also said conceit. Focus is on how wonderful we are, even spiritually how smart we are. And that right there we never say out loud. We would never even admit that until we do some self-examination. But there's a lot of us here that basically believe we know enough Everything else out there is kind of dessert. Which leads to conceit and self-focus. You need to be hungry. Realizing there's so much more about God I have yet to learn. So I just thought it was interesting aspects from C.S. Lewis. I want to spend the rest of the, uh, the last 10 minutes... What can help us? What can help us spend more time giving thanks and praise? Can you help us out? What would you say could help us? I'll give you five ideas here in just a moment, but what would you say? See, Doug over here, he just, he just filled with pride and conceit and all those things. But he just asked, well, but how can I... How can I be more thankful? What would you tell Doug? Sorry, Doug. I just thought sure I heard you say that. But. What would you say? How would you help him out, Dave? Spend more time in the Word. That's a pretty good book, isn't it? Yeah. Spend more time in the Word. Spend some time reading some of the Psalms. Make sure you read your Mark chapter. God's not happy with you when you don't do that. Read the Word. It'll draw you closer to God. It'll cause you to say things like, wow, wow, what an amazing God. What else? All right, it's a good thing you're here tonight. You don't have any ideas, I'll give you five. Well, first of all, it's a, it's a learning process. Like little children, we do not need to be trained to ask for things, but we do need to be trained in the habit of gratitude. 
And I, that was just in my file somewhere, and I have no idea who said that, but it's good. Isn't that true? Do you have to teach a child to ask for things? <laughs> do you have to teach a child to stop asking for things? But you do have to teach a child to be thankful and to express thanks. How many of you have said, no, how many times have you said as a parent, tell so-and-so thank you? Right? Well, we're saying that to you tonight. How thankful are you? Can we take those steps of becoming more thankful and giving God praise? Simple start. Start simply, just pay attention. Pay attention. Were you thanking God for other people in the room before I asked you to stop and look around? Probably not. We were just enjoying it. And again, I, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not up here condemning. I'm just saying I just want to take another step. What does that do to you when you look around at people who have touched your lives? Do it again. Just do it again. Look, now quit looking at me. Look around. What does that do to you? Man, I look around at faces, and, and it, just, it just it brings a smile to my face. I can't look at Judy without smiling. I just look around, and, and I just see, I see different ways that, that you've touched my lives, and it brings a smile to my face. That's pretty cool. Be thankful for that. It starts simply by just, in a sense, paying attention. Stopping for just a moment and looking. And, and, and I'm not saying look around, what do I need to be thankful for? What do I need to be thankful for? No, just look around. If you just look around, it, it'll come to you. You'll see things that's like, wow, that's good stuff. That's good people. And I, I just, uh, what's, what's, what's that lady's name? Sue Monk Kidd talked about uh, the Grateful Center. That's too fancy for me. I would fill in the blank by just saying a place. You have a place that you can just be with God and the thanks come. Something about a fire. Fireplace or a, or a bonfire. I don't, I don't know what it is, but there's something about sitting in a fire that just you become reflective and quiet and calm and just God is good. Now, one of my places is going down the road on a motorcycle. Some people don't understand that. Some of you do. It's just a, it's just a place of God. It brings peace and calm and quiet. Do, do you have a place like that? You have a place that brings memories. I, I, I never, I never thought about this before. And there was um, a Jim Hall uh, preacher, Becky and I know. Uh, he had, he had places that, uh, like at the hospital, there was a. Uh, and I don't remember the details, and and that's going to be obvious. But there was a tree there at the hospital, and I forget all the connections. But every time he saw that tree, it reminded him, and I forget the reasoning. And he called it the tree of life. That tree was not the tree of life, but it reminded him about the life that God has given to him. And it just made him thankful every time he passed that tree. And then he started rattling off about four or five other places around town that was common for him to drive by or walk by or whatever. And there was something about that that reminded him something about God. And I thought, that is so cool. Do you have some places that just helps to remind you about God? One of my kids absolutely loves sunsets. And I just love that because every time they see it, they stop and they think about God. As a parent, I really like that. 
And then there's simply the practice of gratitude. To start, have you ever started a list of what you're thankful for? I love talking about my kids, but that, that gets me in trouble sometimes. But So I'll just say I have one child that um, it wasn't that many years ago that said we're, we're going to do a, a, a thanks list. And, and every day, each one of us had to list five things that we were thankful for. That was one of the coolest things we did as, as a family. Because not only did it make you think and pause and stop, what am I thankful for? But you also got to hear from your kids and, and my wife an interesting perspective of their day because they were telling us what they were thankful for, how God had blessed them. If you haven't done that in a while, try that. Start, start listing a few things every day before you go to bed. This is what I'm thankful for. This is how God has blessed me. Um, as you go through... Uh, soap. Uh, I think there's probably going to be some times that as you're looking at an application, how do I apply this to my day today, that it could be, you know what, this is a day, this is a day of giving thanks. And as I walk through this day, I just want to keep thanking God for all the different things that I saw. Something I read one time, um, every time you complain about something, you have to stop and give thanks for 10 things. <laughs> Some of you aren't smiling like, eh, no, 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 no. Every time you complain about something, you have to stop and give thanks ten times for something else. Just going to call it um, magnify God. Psalm 34 and 3, O oh, magnify the Lord with me, let us exalt his name together. Take the time to read some psalms. Let their words be your words as you lift up God. Maybe it's music. Maybe it's song. Take the time to listen to certain songs. You know you can sing outside of church, right? You know you can listen to, to music and sing with music outside of church, right? Let that be offered up to God. And then celebration. Celebrate God. Uh, it's on purpose that day 40 we're celebrating. Uh, I, I love the crossing of the Red Sea. We love the story, but you know what happened right after that? Go back and read what Miriam says and what Moses says and look at their praise to God. And they're celebrating together. That's why we're doing that Sunday. Let's, 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 focus, let's focus on God and what He's done. And I'll just conclude with this verse, 1 Timothy 1, 17. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. And all we're saying is take the time to honor and glorify God. It's easy to ask for things. Don't stop. I'm not saying that at all. Take some time to thank God for what he's done for you and take some time to praise him for who he is it will change your perspective about things it will change your day it will change your attitude and the other people living in your house will be thankful the more you focus on God the better your world is let's pray God, you are good. You are good. We want to notice the things. We want to give thanks. We want to give you our praise. We want to celebrate you. Father, <laughs> I know it's ridiculous, but we need even help do doing that. But we lift you up as our Father, as our Lord, as our God, as our ruler, as our creator, as our recreator, as the one who's the answer to our lives. And we give you our praise. And we give you thanks for your son. We give you thanks for life. We give you thanks for your presence. We give you thanks for this church. We give you thanks for our family. 
We give you thanks, Father, for the food that we partake of. We give you thanks for those people back there in the kitchen who prepared all that for us. Father, we give you thanks for our houses that we can go and we can rest tonight. And we thank you for the vehicles that you've given to us. And we thank you for all the riches that we have that allows us to bless and help others with that. God, thank you for being in our lives. Through Christ we pray. Amen.